And it's not our choice. God helps us. That's what he does with all the prophets, the Old Testament prophets, with the preachers. He said God gave them directly his word. He said, now go tell the people this uh, and write it down. Because I know you, you, don't, you know, you really don't have that memorization thing down very well, so you better write it down and then you go and read it to the people. Okay. Or, you're pretty good at remembering stuff. Besides, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit and it's going to help you remember all. And you go tell them. See, that's the dilemma that Jeremiah was in. He had a history of this. And in today's Old Testament text, you know, you, you go through it and you hear, <laughs> he's standing there, and, and we talked about Shiloh, that's where the, the, uh, the Ark of the Covenant was stored during the time of the judges, from Joshua to, uh, to Samuel. And then it was uh, captured as uh, Eli uh, died, his sons were killed in battle, uh, you know, Saul lost his life, all sorts of things happening, and, uh, 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 and the Ark of the Covenant was carried off to captivity, and and Shiloh was destroyed. And Jeremiah was using that as an illustration of the people because in Jerusalem they still were not worshiping God. They were still not coming to him for forgiveness of sins, life and salvation, and, and recognizing their sinfulness and receiving God's forgiveness through the sacrificial system that was a, a, a forerunner of what Jesus was going to be doing. And so Jeremiah was telling the people, this temple is going to be just like the Solomon's temple. This temple is going to be destroyed just like Shiloh's tent was. And they didn't like that. Shut up, Jeremiah. In fact, we've had enough of you. Okay, you judges of the people, come on over here to your place at, at, the, at the gate of the temple. And, and, and you, 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 your prophets and priests in the temple, preachers and the pastors and the teachers and so forth, Leaders, come. okay, let's get together because this is blasphemy that Jeremiah is saying. And that's a capital crime. We will kill, then we won't hear it. We won't have to listen to him anymore. Life threatening situation for Jeremiah. And he knows that. So he said, okay, time out. Before you do that, I just want to let you know these are not my words. These are God's words. This comes directly from God. Now, you can do whatever you want to with me. That's up to you. Yeah, that's, that's all right. Go ahead. I'm in your hands. Are you crazy? <laughs> sure, why? I'm in your hands. Do whatever you want to. But let me tell you that if you put me to death, there will be innocent blood on your hands. In other words, you'll be guilty of executing. Jesus was in the same position. He was in the temple in Jerusalem and he was preaching to them that this whole temple, because you're still worshiping idols, you're not worshiping God. You're not coming to God for forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. You're not. And I am here as the Word of God. I'm the Son of God in the flesh. And you're not listening to me. And this whole temple is going to be destroyed. Solomon's temple was destroyed, just as Jeremiah predicted. The temple in Jerusalem was destroyed, just as Jesus predicted. 70 AD, Romans took care of it. And, uh, Jesus and, and Jesus uh, in the text today the, the Pharisees sound like that they're trying to help Jesus out and said Herod's out to get you get, flee go someplace else really you know, Herod is king of all the territory so there wasn't any place for him to go that Herod wasn't in control of anybody much and uh, he'd already killed John the Baptist Jesus' cousin and so Jesus Jesus focused, like Jeremiah. I can't help but preach what God told me to tell you, Jeremiah said. Do with me what you will, but just know I'm innocent, and my blood be on your hand. Didn't Jesus say kind of the same Jeremiah text? He says, look, you go tell that fox. Foxes meant the same kind of thing, connotation then, you know, uh, wily, uh, sneaky, and, and, and just, you know, very, I don't know what relationship.
relationship that has to one of our broadcasting companies. Uh, <laughs> depends on where you are on the specter of things as to how you feel about that. But at any rate, uh, he said, go tell that fox, Herod, that uh, I have work today. I have things to do today. I have things to do tomorrow. And, I, and on the third day, I'll finish my task. Now, we look back, and we know about the sign of Jonah and all that kind of stuff. So we know what is that means talking about when it's on the third day. Okay. We know about that. He's talking about Easter and his resurrection. That's when it will be done. He will have died on the cross and completed it and finished it and risen from the dead as God sealed that his task of his sacrifice for the sins of the whole world would have been completed. Then he will leave Jerusalem. But as for now, this is the place that has a reputation for a thousand years of killing the prophets. So this is where this prophet is going to get killed. And quite soon. Well. Jeremiah. Also, Paul. In the epistle of the day. And he tells the people, you know, uh, imitate me and those who follow. Those who also live and take up their cross and follow Jesus. Those who stay strong in the faith. Follow us. Imitate us. Not just Paul, but all of those who are strong in the faith. Follow them and share with others. He says, stop that. You're going to get hurt. You're going to get killed. You're going to get condemned to hell forever. Repent of your sins. Return to the Lord. Receive forgiveness. And live forever through Jesus Christ. That's what Paul preached. And Paul also, we don't think that, that Jeremiah was put to death. He kind of left off the Egypt coming. We really don't want to hear, don't hear about that. But Paul was likely executed for his faith. Most of the apostles were executed. And, and I, it, it's a tough reminder uh, in my household, it's this word they really, when we're in a struggle and something is really, we're fighting some great challenge, you know, we talk to God, can you, you know, can you deliver this cup from us so that we don't have to go through it? Can you fix all of this? And I remind members of my family that says, Jesus said, Thy will be done. And he went and took the cup of suffering and died on our behalf. So you're expecting God to do for you more than he did for his own son? Get real. But sometimes he does. It's all according to his purpose. Christ had to come and had to die. Jeremiah had to preach, whether it cost him his life. Paul had to preach. And he manipulated things because his objective was to get to the house of Caesar. That he might preach to his household the gospel of Jesus Christ, even though it would most likely mean his execution. And it finally did. But he got the word of God into the house of Caesar. The king, the emperor, the god of the Romans. Where are you? God has called you to be his prophet. You're alive. You're his child. We're all God's prophets. We're all his teachers to the world. They're messing with fire and sharp instruments and their lifestyle. They're not paying attention to God as the people at Shiloh, the people at Jerusalem, and the people of the world. Sinful mankind. I, was, I caught a glimpse of a was it Psychology Today article or something? About they've done, somehow or they've done research and, and, and seem to indicate that, that man instinctively knows that there's God and what God is right in God's sight. That God says, don't mess with matches, don't run with scissors, and don't play with knives. In other words, don't toy with the fires of hell and Satan. Don't follow.
follow the desires of the flesh, which lead us into addictions that we find impossible and bring a short end of life to us. Stay away from those things. Worship God. Recognize our sinfulness. Ask God for forgiveness. Receive that forgiveness and live forever with God as his holy children and sharing with others the, whoa, stop, don't do that. Shut up, okay. God can go. This, I was talking with one of my, uh, one of my classmates who's now retired and he was wintering in Florida and he's doing Bible studies. And a woman came up to him, a, 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 a few years older than, than we are, and, uh, and she approached uh, Pastor Bob and says, Pastor Bob, no, something bothers me. And others are bothered too. He says, in your prayers, in, in the Bible studies that you're doing here for our, 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 our hotel, you know, whatever the condo thing that they're living in, he says, and, and, and you close your prayers in Jesus' name, and that offends us. And he said, the Bible tells me to do that. And she said, oh. I never said another word. Sometimes it's just a little word. Sometimes it's just a comment. But it's not because we don't like them. It's because we love them. It's because God has shown us how much he cares for us. And he calls upon us and strengthens us by word and sacrament to tell the people, stop. <coughs> God loves you and what you're doing is not helpful. And then tell them about God's love and about eternal life. They too might go with us to heaven. You're his prophets today. Being a prophet is dangerous business <coughs> as far as time is concerned. In time. But the heavenly rewards are unimaginable. We can't even fathom glorious he is in heaven. And there is no challenge other than perhaps how we spend timelessness in praise to God because he has made our bodies perfect as Christ's body is perfect. It is holy. It is capable. It is God's will in flesh, in a glorified manner for eternity. That's his promise. That's his gift.